So recently, my PC room has been getting really hot in summer, and I know it's only just been reaching 30 degrees in Sydney, but it still warms up the room by a lot. And that's because I've got about 300 watts of power coming out of my PC at a constant rate. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can undervolt your CPU and GPU and get much better thermal results in your room and in your PC. Now I know that on a day like today, it doesn't really apply considering it's so cloudy outside, but I thought I'd make it anyway. In terms of the room, the room's about the size of a single bedroom with two windows that barely open because they've got restrictors on them and a door that I usually keep closed. As well as this, I've got carpet and books and a bunch of other stuff that just acts as insulation for all the heat that's being put into the room. So today I'll show you how to undervolt your CPU and make your room a whole lot cooler. In terms of the most heat outputting parts in my system, I've got a Ryzen 5 5600 and a RX 6600 XT. So it kicks out a fair bit of heat, around 280-300 watts. So the way that I normally do this is I have open hardware monitor on my secondary monitor and then I have Cinebench R23 and Ryzen Master on my main. Now Ryzen Master is a free software for all AMD Ryzen CPUs and what it allows you to do is change the core voltages and the CPU clock speeds. This allows you to overclock your system, underclock your system, overvolt and undervolt your system. It's pretty handy and it's pretty easy to use. So here are the default settings that it's given us. It's 4.4 GHz, which is its max boost speed, and it's got a voltage of 1.26875 volts. Now, this is pretty good. Now, the result of this is that when I click Cinebench R23, we'll see a big spike in temperatures. So we're about five minutes into the Cinebench run, and you can see that our temperatures are settled around 71.9 degrees, which is all right and tolerable. But where this gets an issue is when you're in an enclosed place like a little room and then that heat gets pushed out into the room heating up your room. Now that's where undervolting comes in. And so we finished with a total of 9630 points, which is a little less than last time but only because I'm screen recording right now. In terms of temperatures we were hovering at around 72 degrees, which is alright but it can be improved on. Here's how I normally undervolt my CPU. I take the clock speed, leave it at its default, and what I do is I crank this number all the way down and then I click apply and test, and then wait about 5 or 10 seconds and that'll tell me if it's stable or not, and then I keep going until I reach a point that's not stable, for example it would be one point that, running stress test, wait for that to do its thing and it'll say last applied profile was not a stable profile so then I'll keep going up until I hit around about a sweet spot and then I just keep going up until I reach one now I've already done this and 1.1375 volts was stable at 4.4 gigahertz so I can click apply to that and then I'm just gonna run Cinebench again and show you the difference and the results are in and we got a score of around 9662 that is within the margin of error of what we got before. Now if we take a look over here at an open hardware monitor, you'll see that we were hovering at around 61 and a half degrees throughout the entire run. That, compared to 71 degrees, is a whole 10 degrees cooler for the exact same performance. In whatever you're doing, it will perform exactly the same. Now this is because voltage essentially acts as stability. The more voltage you have, the more stability. But voltage also means that you have to put more power and more heat into your CPU. If you get a well bin chip, you can easily undervolt it and undervolt it by quite a bit. And you can lose 10 degrees like I did. If you have a poorly bin CPU, maybe not so much. But that's just silicon lottery and that's just luck. But yeah, you can take 10 degrees off your CPU. So if this video helped you in any way today, be sure to subscribe as it really helps out the channel and I upload weekly on a Saturday, usually, I hope. And as always, I'm TechBiz and I'm out.